Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Happy Thursday evening, everyone. Welcome back to Primetime Local News. Abby St. John to my left, here for more news, sports, weather, and much more coming up again on PTLN. Busy weekend ahead, but first, a couple of things such as AgriPort and uh, BioClean Business Bio, and an interesting question of the day uh, in the world of a former hockey player. Yeah, about uh, celebrity privacy. That's always been a big controversial topic. You know, a lot of celebrities, you know, they understand that they're in the spotlight, but they're, it get, it, uh, to a certain point right. that people need to understand. Yeah, there's always a certain a level of privacy people should have or shouldn't have. We'll get into that conversation later. Of course, we want your opinions as well. Uh, chime in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. First, let's go out to Eric Bay. He was on location earlier. Thanks guys. Well, we've already seen it here so far. A few different skiffs of snow throughout and it is definitely only going to get worse as that temperature does continue to drop. So today we are here with the Lloydminster RCMP and today we are going to be speaking with Constable Hagel about what you can remember to do here if you are driving here throughout the winter and as well some things to remember as the RCMP is focusing on pedestrian safety here throughout the month. So we're going to have all that and more here throughout the show tonight. But before that, we're going to go back into the studio and have a look at your local news. Holy, Ro Holy Rosary High School and the RCMP are working together to have coffee with a cop. This has been going on for the school for about two years, and the idea is to break down the stigma around cops being the enemy. Especially at this age, uh, they start to drive, they're starting to get a little more freedom, and here's the man coming to bring them down. So I'm hoping that I can show them the cops are fun and we're here to have fun, we're, we're, not, we're, not your, we're not your enemy. One of the other points that Constable Hagel wants to stress to students is that this is an open environment and people shouldn't be afraid to ask questions. I want to know what they're interested in. What do you want to talk to the police about? What's something you've been really dying to know but you've been too scared to ask? This is your opportunity to ask that. Students don't have to worry about missed questions with RCMP coming by every Thursday. Tonight at the Vic Juba Theatre, we'll be hosting a special performer. Natalie McMas McMaster, known best for her East Coast style fiddling. She is performing in the Border City, which is a part of a short tour. Our Jasmine King has more. Natalie McMaster has been doing music for the past 30 years. The thing she is most well known for is her fiddling, which is the instrument she uses in her music. She is performing at the Vic Juba Theatre where she will be playing in the spirit of her home. It's nothing that you wouldn't expect. I mean, it's still me and it carries with that the energy and the Cape Breton, you know, finesse, I guess, and, and the lifiness, the spirit of of the driving tunes, you know. The music she is performing will be reflective of her new single, Sketches, which will be coming out on November 1st. The music, I want to present it in a different way. I want it, I want it to be more reflective of the theme of Sketches, which is more um, the focus being the melodies themselves of the tunes as opposed to the arrangement or the spectacle of it. I really want it to come back to the core of of what I do is just love, love playing tunes. Over the course of the past decade, Natalie and her husband have been performing and traveling with their kids, one thing they never get tired of. We feel so lucky that we're able to find, they're able to take our kids, our children with us. Because as hard as that is, and people say, oh, it must be hard traveling with your kids, my husband always says, it's harder traveling without them. And that is true. Natalie hasn't got the chance to do a solo show in a few years, so it's a nice change of pace for her, but she's still excited to perform with her family later on in the year. For me, coming out here for six shows, it's a lovely little uh, change from us touring as a family together, um, but I'm very, well, I'm grateful for both, but I'm looking forward to, we're doing a big Christmas run in the States coming up. It's probably listed on the dates as well. And uh, that'll be the whole family on the tour bus. And... With the release of her new single, Sketches, going to the studio and being in her own space was a change away from her family she wasn't used to. I had four days in the studio, and that was, like I said, luxurious. Just to be able to complete thoughts and to attend only to yourself 
into the music and not have to dress anyone else. You only have to dress yourself in the morning and, you know, all those things, not have to pack the lunches or, you know, make the meals and all that and just focus totally on my love and passion that has been there before my kids, before my husband, since I was, you know, born. After the show at the Vic Juba Theatre, Natalie will be performing in a few other towns across Saskatchewan, Alberta and BC. For more info on her shows, visit her website or Facebook page. Jasmine King, Primetime Local News. Now we're going to Eric Bay, who is on location today. Once again, we are back here today at the Lloyd Minster RCMP Detachment and we are taking a look at some winter safety to take forward here as we get into some colder temperatures and Constable Hagel joins me now and we've already seen a little bit of those flurries here so far. So what are things, some things to remember here about winter road safety when people are out driving? Give yourself extra time to stop. Uh, the roads are slick, they're icy. You may not see the ice on the road, but it's definitely there. Give yourself an extra car length or two just to make sure you can stop safely. And now also with that colder weather, it does come an increased risk of possible accidents or maybe being stranded on the road. So what's the importance of having an emergency kit in your vehicle and what should be in that kit? Definitely if you're traveling on the highway, uh, let people know where you're going, what your estimated arrival time is going to be, and make sure you have a plan in case you do get stranded on the side of the road. I always recommend carrying an extra set of blankets uh, for you and your children, as well as some, some granola bars or some kind of easy carbs to eat and a big bottle of water. And now you mentioned that too, that arrival time making sure, but how important is that time, you know, maybe giving yourself a few extra seconds or minutes when you're going from place to place? Oh, definitely. Take a look at the road conditions, make sure you're checking out uh, the weather conditions as you're driving, and make sure you are giving yourself that extra time in case you do run into a storm. All right, thank you for this, and we're going to have some more from back here with Constable Hagel, continuing with some winter safety and things to remember here as those temperatures do start to drop, and it does get a little colder here over the next few months. But before that, we are going to head back into the studio. Thanks very much, Eric. Uh, fairly cloudy conditions, certainly cloudier than we were expecting, although we had a moment of sun or two earlier on in the day. Nine degrees, the current temperature, and that will continue to drop fairly fast as we head into the AMs. 21 and minus 15 are your records respectively in 2018 and in 1992. Despite how cold it was, it was a good year for baseball fans. That was when the Blue Jays played in their first World Series, beating the Braves that year. Uh, westerly winds have calmed down, fortunately, so the wind chill isn't as bad, bad as it would be otherwise still though enough of a chill that uh, you should put a jacket on when you head outside. Satellite and radar showing a fair amount of cloud cover coming in over the past hour. Uh, no precipitation as of yet, no snowfall of any kind. Keep an eye out for any alerts that Environment Canada does put out over the next three or four days. There's an increased chance specifically on Sunday. A few regional temperatures outside of Lloydminster. Cold Lake has cooled down to five degrees and it's seven out in Meadow Lake. North Battleford, uh, despite being fairly cloudy, is still relatively warm at 18 degrees, five in Isle of Cross, 15 out in Provost and Edmonton and Saskatoon have also stayed relatively warm. 14 degrees in Edmonton with a little bit of sunlight there and Saskatoon has had a few rays of sunlight but mostly cloudy. They're sitting at 17 degrees. A few overnight temperatures uh, around the region as well. Meadow Lake, Bonneville, Provost and others will get to minus one. Uh, Murnham and Wainwright will be even cooler at minus two. Some areas with Fairly clear skies, but areas like Bonneville and Paradise Hill, of course, will be relatively cloudy. There's your school day forecast, minus 1 by 8 a.m., but plus 12 by the time school is out. And while they are saying uh, a strong chance of sunny skies, we didn't get much sun today, so be warned heading into tomorrow. 9 degrees Saturday with a low of minus 2, with the wind still coming out of the west. Then 5 degrees and minus 2 on Sunday, and a 25% chance of precipitation there. So definitely by the time you get to Sunday, keep an eye out on all of those warnings from Environment Canada. That's your three-day forecast. We'll have your seven-day later on on Primetime Local News. Primetime Local News. Serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Welcome back. Well, though, for those looking to put the finishing touches on a new home or looking at a remodel, Blinds by Jackie takes the time to find out what looks best for your place. Eric Bay has more in this week's BioClean Business Bio. 
Blinds by Jackie treats every customer as an individual, taking the time to visit a client's home or office and help choose a style and color that works for the space. They'll come to us and we can show them all our product in the store and then we book an in-home consultation and then we go into their home and we measure their windows for them and then we look at colors and stuff like that. That's our favorite part. Blinds by Jackie covers a wide style of blinds to help cover the need of any request. We sell hard window coverings, um, which are blinds like shutters, cellular shades, faux woods, wood blinds, roller shades, those type of blinds. Um, we offer free in-home consulting, and then we do quotes for people, and we do commercial, residential, whatever people need. Co-owners for three years, Jarvis and Mayer, say their own areas of expertise complement each other, keeping the business running smooth. It's actually been really good. Yeah. We both work really well together. Um, we think a little differently, which works very well. Um, she's more analytical and I'm more technologically advanced, so it works really well. She's come a long way as far as taking Computers, things. Yeah. <laughs> she's taught me everything I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it works really well. Our partnership works great. More on Blinds by Jackie can be found at their website. And that's this week's BioClean Business Bio. Business Bio, brought to you by BioClean. Call the Bio Team, 1-833-246-8326. The Disaster Specialists. Welcome back. Well, harvest is always a stressful time for farmers, and this year's tough conditions have only added to the stress. Eric Bay has more on the effects on farmers' mental health and the steps being taken to help in this week's Ag Report. Early mornings and long days trying to harvest crops makes fall one of the hardest seasons for farmers and their mental health, something the Do More Agriculture Foundation has seen this year. Especially harvest, I mean, it's been a really tough year overall um, when we do look back at the, the history of the year and the extreme cold and extreme um, you know, dryness in many areas and then now compounded with a really difficult harvest. Um, stress, no doubt, um, and understandably would be at its, at its peak for our producers. The Do More Agriculture Foundation has seen a rise in the farming community's willingness to talk about mental health, progress that Stewart calls encouraging. We're really pleased, I guess you could say. I mean, it's bittersweet, um, you know, that that people have to experience uh, mental illness and mental health uh, difficulties and things like that. But um, the first step towards healing that is individuals or a uh, society is is talking about it. So we've definitely seen people opening up and ready to have the conversation. Stewart says it's important for people who see others who may be struggling to initiate the conversation and check in on their mental health. Peer-to-peer, -peer, family, member-to-family member, -to -family member um, you know, just having these conversations, you know, maybe not in the heat of the moment, but being like, you know, if you ever feel that you are struggling more than normal, um, you know, is it okay if I ask you about it? You know, we place a lot of onus on those who are struggling to come forward, but I also feel that on the flip side of it, as we increase our mental health literacy, um, you know, that we can be asking and initiating more conversations as well. The farm stress line is available to farmers and ranchers in Saskatchewan. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. This ag report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Centre. Depend on them for product, tools and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Centre with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. Now we're going to take a look at your egg prices. Part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops and Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. The Lloydminster Bobcats continue to retool the current roster. This morning, trading defenseman Riley Hogan to the Calgary Canucks for forward Brendan Moreau. 
Hogan had four assists in 14 games this season, while Moreau had four points in 10 games with Calgary. The 19-year-old center from Wetaskiwin what has 33 points and 74 penalty minutes in 87 games between the Canucks and the Bonneville Pontiacs in his junior career. Wrestlers basketball preseason is almost finished before next week's matchup versus Nate. The men's team played a series this past weekend and has been taking part in practices. Our Evan Kenny reports. You take where we're undefeated in preseason, which is good, but it doesn't mean anything, right? Um, you know, coaches are holding, holding stuff that they'll do in the season. Some players are not playing. Uh, we were out to without two of our you know leaders today as well so uh you know i'm i'm enjoying preseason but i'm i'm waiting ready for it to end the rustlers hosted the saskatoon basketball academy this past weekend and in two bouts walked away with two wins in the first game lakeland won while showing off their offense scoring 96 points scoring in the game came by committee um, it was a game where, you know, guys had to sort out, you know, certain situations, so I, I loved it today. Every guy in here is willing to work hard, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to win, so I'm really confident in this group of guys. In the second game, wrestlers forward Quantez Simmons would go off and score team-high 16 points, leading his team to a tight 73-65 to win. Last year, Lakeland only lost to Nate once and averaged just over 22 rebounds per game. Head coach Ray Thomas added that the team will have to play small ball this year and will have to work hard for their rebounds and for their gritty points. Simmons, who's one of the bigger forwards on the wrestler's squad, only stands at 6'5". Obviously though, after this weekend where he put up a combined 31 points and more than a handful of rebounds, size won't be stopping him. Evan Kenny. Primetime local sports. A strong group of veterans are returning this season for the Rustlers women's basketball team, but one of the players that's been in the Lakeland gym for almost every home game is a newcomer. Here's Josh Ryan with a look at a local athlete hoping to give the Border City many reasons to cheer while out on the court. Maidstone's Alana Olson grew up in a household of Rustler fans. Now, she has a lot more on her plate than cheering. This is what we did on Friday, Saturday nights. You'd come up and watch volleyball and basketball, so it's, it's crazy to be able to be the person who they're going to come watch. It's been like a dream. <laughs> Olson's fantastic senior year, which included winning MVP at the Saskatchewan High School All-Star Game, gave the Rustlers coaching staff even more reason for excitement about her joining the program. Absolute uh, freak athlete, uh, really long wingspan, jumps well, rebounds well, and, and she's been playing really well for us so far in scrimmages. Um, she just needs a bit of time to get used to structure. That experience has helped her adjust to the increased speed of the college game. It helped definitely coming here for bomb drop because I was used to playing with people who I wasn't necessarily familiar with and being able to learn how to know where they want to play and how they want to play in a short amount of time. The rookie guard has also received plenty of support from her veteran teammates. They kind of know the ins and outs and they're always willing to help you with basketball or school or everything like that. Olsen is focused on improving her movement on defense and making sure that as her skills grow, she contributes in games by corralling as many rebounds as possible. If it's in transition or if it's running back on defense, those are things that I can do. So um, things that I'm comfortable with and able to bring to the team without putting a whole bunch of effort forward for that. And that effort through the preseason has her poised to give her parents plenty of opportunities to cheer for their new favorite wrestler. They're happy that I'm doing something that I love and that it's close and that they can come and support me whenever they want. Um, yeah, so for sure it's, it's really great to have that opportunity. She's worked her butt off uh, every single practice, so we're very excited with the potential of her coming from Maidstone and being in our program. Elsie on two on two! Elsie! Josh Ryan, Primetime Local Sports. Now we're going to Eric Bay, who was on location today. Back here now at the Lloyd Minster RCMP detachment, and we have been taking a look at some things to remember here as those temperatures do start to drop and we do get into that winter driving and those conditions. And Constable Hagel joins me once again and now talking with that dropping temperatures. People are going to start obviously using that command start. So what's the importance of making sure their vehicles are safe and uh, not risking any, any thefts over the winter? We do find an uptick in vehicle thefts in the wintertime. A lot of criminals are just 
just that, they're criminals of opportunity. A lot of times uh, people are leaving their vehicles running and leaving keys in it. So I'm a big proponent of command start. If you are using the command start, lock your doors. Um, if you can't lock your doors, you don't have a command start, you don't have the ability, bring a second set of keys and lock your vehicle doors. Very important, obviously, for sure. Now, what is, what's also the importance of making sure that no valuables are left behind in those vehicles as well? Same rules apply as the summertime. Make sure you're taking all your valuables out. Uh, criminals are, are looking for those easy targets, and they're grabbing what they see. And if they don't see anything inside your car, they're not going to go through it. And now, once again, we've also been talking a little bit about that winter road safety as well. And now with the cold comes a lot more darkness, and especially if, say, emergency operators like yourself are out on the roads, what's the importance of making sure that they are visible and making sure people slow down here on those roads? Always when you're driving, make sure you're, you're knocking off your headlights, you're wiping them off, you're knocking off your brake lights, and make sure you have your lights on at night when you're driving. Um, slow down for emergency vehicles when you're passing us, tow trucks, police cars, slow down to 60 kilometers an hour. Keep us safe on the side of the road. And now what are maybe some other important things to do? You mentioned visibility, so making sure obviously with that snow that before you do leave, uh, is it important, I guess, obviously to uh, make sure those windows are clear beforehand? Oh, absolutely. It is a ticketable offense in both provinces to drive with an obstructed view. So if you decide not to scrape your windows off, it's a good chance you're going to get a ticket. All right, thank you for this, and we are going to have some more from back here again, continuing with some of that winter safety as those temperatures do start to drop and we start to see some snow and ice along the roads. But before we do get to that, we're going to head back into the studio. Quick look at your next 24 hours here. We have a very quick drop down to minus temperatures uh, in the border city and the surrounding region. Uh, three degrees by three, and we will get down to minus one by 8 a.m., which is a little later in the day to usually get that uh, low of the night. But we're right back into double digits by the afternoon uh, and should be in the low teens for basically from 2 o'clock to about uh, 6, 7 o'clock before things then start to cool down to about 8, 9 degrees. Of course, wind chill is always a factor as well. Uh, should be cloudy for the next couple of hours, but it could clear off a little bit overnight. And uh, we're hoping for a clear morning, possibly clear afternoon as well, despite some cloud cover coming in uh, from a little bit of the northwest of Alberta. Again, a closer look on the map here you can see. Should be cloudy for a couple hours, but starts to clear off by around 10 or 11 a.m. And that should continue on through the rest of the evening heading into the morning. Just keep an eye out on those alerts as we were expecting a little more sunlight today than we got and it ended up being very dreary looking outside indeed. Uh, also never got up to that promised high of 14 degrees. It actually is 14 right now in Edmonton and it's 12 out in Vancouver. They're still getting a ton of rain out on the coast. 15 in Regina, 10 in Winnipeg and moving over to eastern Canada. Still pretty cool in Toronto at 8 degrees, 9 in Quebec, 12 out in Halifax. They're also experiencing a little bit of a downpour right now. 7 degrees in St. John's and in our region here, 7 degrees in both St. Paul and Bonneville, 9 in Lac La Biche. Vegreville still warm at 12 degrees, 10 in Wainwright, 14 in Provost, also 14 in Macklin, and the rest of the Sask side is for the most part a little cooler. 8 in both Green Lake and Meadow Lake, St. Walbrook at 9 degrees, Maidstone at 11. North Battleford, though, they've enjoyed a nice warm day there, 18 degrees at the moment, and still a hint of some sunlight uh, between those clouds. Those south-southwest south winds have also been relatively calm, but should shift a little bit to the west and then back straight to the southwest by tomorrow. Um, shouldn't get too much of a bump, maybe some strong gusts here or there, but the average speed should remain below 10 kilometers per hour. Minus one for the overnight low and 14 for the high. Once again, there, a mix of sun and cloud, hopefully a little extra cloud compared to the sun. It's a little cooler out in Cold Lake, five degrees with wind out of the west northwest there. Could pick up over the next 24 hours, but not expecting huge gusts. Minus one, also the overnight low, 11 for the high, hopefully some sun, also a lot of cloud ahead. And then nine degrees in the border city, which should again start to cool down a little bit in the next few hours. Minus one overnight and 12 for tomorrow's high with wind coming out of the west a little bit more stringent than those other areas. Uh, nine degrees then should be the high for Saturday with a low of minus two. Uh, Sunday, a little bit more cloud cover, a low of five as there's a big drop there in temperature and an outside chance of some clouds developing that could bring with them some snow. So keep an eye on that. Eight degrees on Monday, six Tuesday, plenty of cloud cover there as well. Two degrees on Wednesday and then three to finish off your seven day forecast. Now we're going to Eric Bay, who is on location today. 
Once again, we are back here today at the Lloydminster RCMP, and we've been taking a look at some safety concerns, and now Constable Hagel joins me once again, and one of the RCMP's focuses this month is pedestrian safety. So what are some things that drivers specifically can remember when watching out for those pedestrians? During these dusk and, and twilight hours, uh, the sun's setting a little bit earlier. Make sure you're paying attention to the side of the road. Make sure you're watching those pedestrians, and make sure you, once again, are scraping your windows off so you can see those pedestrians as they're crying across the street. And then on the other side of the equation, how important or what should pedestrians be looking for and watching out for, making sure that they are staying safe as well on these roads? Same rules in the summertime. Make sure you're paying attention to what's going on around you. Make eye contact with that driver so that driver knows what your intention is. And give that, that vehicle a few extra seconds to slow down because you never know there might be ice in that road. Very important for sure, and we have been talking as well about those winter conditions. So again, just for people who may have missed earlier, what are some things for people to remember here as those road conditions maybe start to deteriorate a little bit and people are hitting those roads to travel? Give yourself extra time when you are traveling on the highway this year. Make sure you're letting people know your estimated time of arrival. And always pack a safety kit, which would include blankets, some granola bars or easy carbs to eat, and a big bottle of water. And then also we just did have a long weekend and there'll be a few more here coming up and especially Christmas time is a big time. So what are some things that maybe people should also remember as they are traveling on those busier weekends throughout the winter? Give yourself more time to stop. Don't follow too closely. Um, make sure you are paying attention to what vehicles are doing around you. All right, thank you once again for this. And we are going to have some more from back here again, continuing with some road safety here throughout the winter. And again, what you should be looking for. And as well, if you're a pedestrian as well, making sure that you know what exactly is going on around you and how you can stay safe here throughout the winter. And as well as those temperatures do start to drop and we do see those worst road conditions here throughout the next few months. But before we do get to all that, we are going to go back into the studio. Our question of the day, not a fun topic for some people certainly, uh, Donald Brashear, a former NHL uh, enforcer, was to uh, take, a picture was taken of him working at a Tim Hortons, uh, essentially that got picked up by most media outlets and it became a huge story, some people posting the wrong photo then with Donald Brashear, so our question of the day is, do celebrities earn a certain amount of privacy after they've retired from the public spotlight and they're well away from their profession? Obviously, people who are still famous, there's a certain level of being a public persona that's there, but in particular, the guy like Brashear, he's no longer a public figure anymore. He hasn't been for basically 10 years. I think regardless of your status in Hollywood or your celebrity status, privacy is still a human right. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, showing up at these famous people's homes, taking pictures of their families, that crosses a line no matter where you are on the celebrity status um, uh, stage. With him, he's out and he just wants to live his life, so I think people needs, need to let him do that. And there's also the, his personal battle with addiction that he's had to get over. Um, not the greatest uh, day for him to then just try to go about doing your job and someone takes a picture of you at your job. Exactly. Yeah. So let's move on to something a little bit more fun to talk about, pet of the day. Uh, Brew is up first and uh, Brew's ready for bed. Very, very adorable, super cute. Hank out in the snow. Yes, the camouflaged, indeed, very hmm. adorable. Uh, Miss Ruby, our third. Love the name and very fluffy dog. Ginger and Wix. Best buds looking like, very adorable. And Patrick to end things off. Love the name and I love the cat, very adorable. And we love when you send in pics with the names for a shot of that gift card. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Uh, now joining us is writer-director um, Chris Cowden, uh, the director of the new film uh, Moments in Space Time, which will have a very special screening uh, tomorrow night, but also premieres on October 25th. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, before we get fully in, uh, let's give people just a very quick background uh, into how you got into the film industry and leading up to uh, doing this film. Oh, yeah, sure. So um, I've been making films probably since I was about 11. Uh, I've made them, you know, all throughout high school and university and, um, uh, you know, went to film school. Um, I teach media arts and filmmaking. And, you know, I've worked on shows like Hell on Wheels for AMC and a couple other productions. Um, so it's just something I've always been actively engaged in. And um, I would say probably about uh, once a year, I 
do a completely new project that I'll write and direct. And so uh, this is our big project for this year. Yeah, and, so, and maybe explain to people too uh, how you came to have the VIP here in uh, Cold Lake. Sure, yeah, well, so I'm from Cold Lake or the kind of like land area. And um, we really wanted to make a film that, you know, had Alberta playing Alberta. A lot of the time you'll have, uh, you know, Hollywood movie that's filmed in Canada and then it's supposed to take place in the U.S. Right. And we thought, well, you know, why can't we make a story around, you know, uh, you know, a small town or a city in Canada, in Alberta. And so that's exactly what we've done. So um, our story takes place in Cold Lake and kind of the Lakeland area. And we highlight a lot of the great places that the city has to offer. And we also kind of wanted to um, let the world know that they should come to Alberta and film movies here because um, it's a fantastic industry. And obviously a beautiful location to uh, film movies Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now you uh, are wor worked with a fairly well-known actor uh, in John Reese davies Many people know him from Indiana Jones, Lord of the Rings. Uh, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was phenomenal. Um, he's an amazing actor. Uh, he takes direction exceptionally well, and he comes to set with all sorts of interesting ideas for the character, and he has so much experience uh, that he could really add a lot to the character. And his character, uh, Mason, is someone who's suffering from dementia, and uh, that was a topic that was really near and dear to John's heart. Um, he had uh, uh, his wife before she died had suffered uh, from dementia for about 13 years. And so he was able to bring a lot of insight to the role and the script, um, which was awesome because it made it a great collaboration between director and actor. Absolutely. And he had some very uh, positive things to say about you as well, calling you a remarkable, remarkably good director. That must feel uh, pretty positive hearing that from someone who you admire, I'm sure. Yeah, um, fantastic. Well, especially from him, you know, he's worked with uh, Peter Jackson and Steven Spielberg and a lot of other amazing directors. So uh, I was thrilled with that and um, just, you know, thrilled to be on set and kind of see, uh, um, you know, everything I'd spent, you know, over a year writing and putting together coming into action, you know, on camera. And as you said before, you're from the area. Um, has there been a pretty special experience kind of working with the people in the area too, being able to bring uh, the business to so essentially your hometown, but also the exposure? Yeah, I, and we wanted to do both with that, right? Um, I'm a big supporter of Keep Alberta Rolling, which is a campaign right now to uh, keep Hollywood films shooting in Alberta. And you know we've got lots of film workers here. And obviously the oil industry has gone down quite a bit, especially in the Lakeland area. So uh, I think it would be phenomenal if more productions could come into the area. Uh, we have so much to offer, even shooting in the summertime. I mean, the days are longer. Um, there's so much, you know, going for this place. And so uh, the great thing was the city of Cold Lake and, you know, Bonneville and surrounding area um, were incredibly supportive with what we wanted to do with this project and really helped to make it easy you know, shutting down roads, uh, helping us find locations. We had, you know, the fire department coming in and wetting down streets for night shoots so they look good. Uh, the ambulance, uh, a phenomenal amount of support from the Lakeland. And um, even extras and background actors, that sort of thing, we had well over 300 in the film, which was awesome. And obviously you're showing their, your uh, thanks by having this VIP screening tomorrow at Cold Lake High School. Of course, the premiere on October 25th. Really quick because we have to wrap up, but uh, maybe talk for just a few seconds about the uh, uh, fund you and your wife had started uh, in 2011. Oh, yeah. So we started the Krista Pack Cowden Fund, which is a scholarship fund for Métis students uh, who want to attend post-secondary education in the area. Uh, I'm Métis, and so it was kind of a way for me to give back um, with one of the film premieres that I did. And so we give uh, thousands of dollars away every year for students to, to go to college, essentially. And um, yeah, and I just want to say the film comes out October 25th for the public. So please come check it out. Uh, it will be unlike anything you've seen produced uh, in Alberta in a long time. Um, we really highlight it in an interesting way. Absolutely. I'm sure especially folks here in the Lakeland and Midwest region will be excited. Chris, thank you for stopping by and best of luck on the film. Perfect. Thanks for having me, guys.
A message of hope is coming to Lloydminster this weekend at Lloyd Gospel Fellowship Church. You can head out on Friday evening or take in the full day on Saturday. They're going to have a kids club as part of this event. They're going to have some great live music, including entertainment from Kenny Mack. Plus, they've got a number of guest speakers, including the keynote speaker, Kim Leader. It's going to be an inspirational weekend. And if you'd like to attend, it's free to get in. They do ask that you bring a donation for the food bank. If you want to get more details, you can always go online, hopeformore.com. If you love to have your nose in a book and you're always looking to discover new stories and new tales, well, you can pick up some great books at the upcoming Friends of the Library Fall Book Sale. It's coming up this Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Just head for the Lloydminster Public Library. They will have a number of different books covering a number of different topics that you'll be able to purchase to help out the library. The sale gets underway at 10 a.m. and runs until 3 if the books hold out. And you are in store for a great meal on Sunday night. It is the annual Swedish S'more being held at the Militant Hall, just 17 miles north of Maidstone on Highway 21. And if you head out, you are in for a great meal and also a great opportunity to visit with some great folks. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Klaikis, and that's what's happening. We're at Sunrise Pharmacy today. Thank you, Pratik Patel, the pharmacist here, for joining us to talk about the flu shot. Tell me when the campaign starts. The campaign will start on October 21st. And who should be getting this shot, Pratik? Uh, the flu shot should be get by each and every person in the Canada, okay. as per the NSI, NACI recommendations. They do recommend to get the flu shot from the age six months to the, until the people who are living here. Okay, and the flu shot is free of charge, correct? Yes, I would say that there will be no cost to Canadian residents, okay. uh, which is be publicly funded by the provincial government. And what about making an appointment? I know there's often concerns that people have to show up and or call ahead, but how does that part work? Uh, usually it's depend on the pharmacy, how do they manage the flow. Mm -hmm. Here we are at Sunrise Pharmacy. We do not recommend the people to book in because everybody's busy in their life. We just tell them to use walking and we will be try to manage them. And what is the benefit of having a flu shot? Oh, it's a really great benefit. So I would say that one, it's kind of the start, a get ahead to fight against that kind of the infection because the flu, it's called the influenza. It's mm -hmm. infection in the airway which is caused by the influenza virus, which is easily caught and the spread. So I would say that it's a really it's really recommendable to get the flu shot. Now, so I know some people have the thought process that, well, I'm healthy, I've always been healthy, I shouldn't get the shot. But even if you are healthy, from my understanding, you should get it because you can still pass it to people who maybe are not healthy. Is that correct? That's the one of the most important thing too. And second thing, it's something if you do are, if you're healthy and you get the flu shots, it's something start ahead. Mm -hmm. Because the, the way they have explained to you in their mechanism and everything's like that, if you do get the flu shot, the chance is more that once the body will prepare that antibody in your body after getting a flu shot off, I think the body will take around 14 days to prepare the antibody once you get a flu shot. Okay. So body already kind of did the work already. So in the future, if you do get hit with the flu, which is available in the market currently, then kind of the body will already start to fight against that. Unless if you did not get a flu shot, then body will take a time to fight against that one. And meanwhile, you might get sick. Right. Until the body will have that antibody, the damage might be worst. Yeah, something very low. It's depend on your, how your immune system is there. Right, okay. And how long does the campaign last? How long will you offer the flu shots? In Canada, the flu season start mid-November to the end of the April. Okay. So what the government, the provisional government do that, kind of they are a little bit ahead like that. Last week, yeah, third week of the October, they start the camping. Okay. So make sure that before the flu season heat in Canada, everybody will get their flu shots. But usually the majority of the times, the provincial government to run this camping end of the March. So if anybody didn't get an opportunity to get the flu shot, it's the best thing to get it as, as long as they have a time. It's not fixed time, but if you do get it before the November, that will be the always best. But if you do not get a time before the November 15 to get it, 
I would recommend you to get it as soon as edge we remember that. Okay, but the bottom line is just try and get it as soon as possible, correct? That's my recommendations to them. Okay, so once again, before we wrap up here, Pratik, uh, the campaign starts Monday, and f if anybody wants information, can they just give you a call? Definitely, they can contact us here. We will always helpful them one. And particularly, I would advise to the people who get the flu shot, particularly the people who are 65 and above, mm -hmm. the people who have a chronic disease such as the lung, yeah, heart, yeah, metabolic disorder such as the Crohn's disease, cancers. The, I would recommend you them to get the flu shot as soon as possible. Okay. So by this way, make sure that before the flu season hit, they were not getting sick. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Some great information. And once again, campaign starts Monday, October 21st. And you can just walk into Sunrise Pharmacy here. Definitely. No appointment needed for your flu shot. Definitely. Thank you very much for that one. Have a wonderful day.